in the world today. Protecting our country's borders is vital. It is seen as a gateway to the UK. These are the men and women in uniform, responsible for safeguarding Ireland's borders. Stopping. Look at me, behind the yellow line. Searching. Have you been stopped at a checkpoint before? We just listen to me, we just listen to me. And seizing. Drugs, arms and illegal goods. If anyone tries to harm me, that dog will tear them to shreds. Saving lives. Oh, I'd say about 200 kilometres per hour. And protecting Ireland's inhabitants and millions of visiting tourists. You could have been here a hundred times. It doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to get in the hundred and first time. They police the ports. But you have to make sure that definitely no, nobody will need a vehicle. The airports. Why did you tell me you weren't working? And the roads. These are very badly damaged straps. If you can't drive the truck, shouldn't be on the road. These are the border interceptors. Coming up, at Shannon Airport, it looks like no visa, no entry. Will this traveler be sent packing? Just get you to take a seat there. Yeah. He could be from the likes of the Philippines, uh, far flung corners of the world. The driver refuses to give her true identity. But what has she got to hide? So either you're giving me a false name or. Well, I've no match for that. And Disney arrive in town. And with it comes a security lockdown for Dublin Port. Situated off the Atlantic coastline on the Shannon Estuary, Shannon Airport is the gateway to the southwest of Ireland, giving travellers easy access to Limerick, Galway and beyond. It's the third largest of Ireland's airports, with over 1.7 million passengers travelling through it in 2017. Are you golfing? No. Maybe next time. <laughs> You take care, sir. The airport's busiest routes are between London, New York, and Boston. So you're a fiddle player, sir? No, Piper. Oh, you're a Piper, yeah? From a security perspective, right. the airport has a unique and vital relationship with transatlantic flights. We're the first port to call here in Shannon for um, transatlantic traffic. If they, if they get into difficulty, no, my dear, thank you. they pass that point of no return where they can turn back from America and they must keep going to uh, the western seaboard, so we're it. So border control here remains tight. People attempting to enter illegally may find themselves in a very bad position. Shannon doesn't have daily return flights to some of the airports preferred by would-be illegal immigrants, with the result that anyone that might arrive here illegally could be looking at up to a week inside an Limerick prison pending a return flight. How are you? You're with that gang, yeah? Yeah. It's estimated that there are upwards of 26,000 undocumented workers in Ireland. Are you OK, girl? You're OK, there's no panic. Many are foreign nationals illegally working in the country. How are you doing? having arrived on tourist or limited work visas, and then disappearing. Thank you. A non-EU resident has just flown into Shannon Airport and has arrived at immigration officer Niall Camp's desk. This is no simple case of stamping and letting him through, though. He's carrying an unusual amount of paperwork, and of much greater significance, he doesn't have a visa. No visa usually means no entry. I tell you, I'll just get you to take a seat there. Here, I'll call you back in five minutes. No, He's no, told no. to take a seat and can only wait to find out if he'll be allowed into the country. I'll talk to you in five minutes. Thank you. That man behind me now, that gentleman behind me, he could be from the likes of the Philippines, uh, far flung corners of the world. We're not too concerned what country he comes from as long as he is who he says he is. But there's a small bit of paperwork involved with him, so just put him aside, not to delay the queue too much. It'll take only two minutes. The entire flight is being processed, and the passenger is still waiting. He'll have to stay put until Officer Camp is ready to see him. How you doing? The passenger is called back to the desk. He's got to hope that the paperwork he's carrying will be enough to allow him into Ireland. How long will you be staying for? Welcome back. Thank you. Now, how are you doing? Yep. 
Officer Kampf is aware that he has arrived in the country without a visa. And with no visa, there's a very real chance he'll be sending him packing on the next flight home. Yeah. Have you been here before? Yeah. yeah. However, having gone through his paperwork, he's identified as a working international fisherman. And he's carrying a seaman's book. It's a record of his service working at sea and allows him entry into a country without a visa if he's immediately joining a ship's crew. Do you know the name of the ship you're boarding? Valiant. With the Arclo Valiant? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Working on ships all his life. And for him to correctly enter a country with the amount of visas he'd require, it would be an impossibility, or very difficult at least. So what he has is a, a seaman's book. It's a type of a passport for the high seas. Seaman's book, passport. Thank you very much. Best of luck. With all the paperwork done, he now has 24 hours to join his ship. Garda traffic officers McMahon and Fay are on patrol around Dublin Port, one of the busiest entry points to the Republic of Ireland. Attention. There's it. Here's What are we looking at? Their automatic number plate recognition system has raised a flag, and they head to intercept the car. Yeah, I drive off from a fuel station. When was the warning put on there, control? The car has driven off from a filling station the night before without paying for goods. Yep. They track it down and pull it over. What do we need to find, driver? Hello. Is this your own car, madam? I do, yeah. What's your name? Nicola Thompson. Yeah. What's your date of birth, Nicola? 28th of Yeah. 1974. Nicola, can you tell me who was driving the car last night around 9 o'clock? Oh. You were. And the car was up in Navan last night at 9 o'clock at a filling station. It left without paying for wine and for oil. You don't know anything about that? Tango Bravo 208. Control, could you oblige with a driver look up, please? Her name is Thompson. And the date of birth is the 28th of the 5th, 1974. Nicola? Yeah. I'm not getting any match for any driving license assigned to a Nicola Thompson, the 28th of the 5th, 1974. So either you're giving me a false name or. Well, I've no match for that. Anyone who has a license in the country, their details are stored on their computer. And there's no match for Nicola Thompson, the 28th of May, 74. No, oh, it's the 28th of May. No, it's the 9th of August, 1988. You said the 28th of May, 74. No, sorry, sorry. Yeah. They tell me 88. You're not 1988. So start giving me your correct name address. I'll arrest you and take you to the guard station and we verify your details there. So give me, pardon me? Noreen. Noreen. N-O-R-E-E-N. B-Y-R-N-S. What's your date of birth, Noreen? 28th. 28th of the 5th? 71. 71. One moment, please. Would you mind trying a different name, please, for the driver lookup? Burns, B-Y-R-N-E-S. Date of birth, the 28th of the 5th, 1971. No, this is supposed to be a Noreen, but... No match, no match. Having now been given two false names, will the Garda ever find out who the driver really is? While patrolling the major routes outside Dublin, linking the city with the ports, airport and the rest of Ireland, police pulled over a truck that was driving erratically and exceeding the speed limit. The vehicle was immediately seized and the driver charged with dangerous driving. But suspecting there is more going on with this truck than meets the eye, the police have now called in senior transport officer Seamus Lynch from the Road Safety Authority to investigate. The driver has to comply with certain rules are called the driver's orders regulations. So the driver has to take prescribed breaks, he's got to take prescribed daily rest and weekly rest periods. And he's also restricted to a certain number of driving hours so the purpose of the TACRAF then basically is to keep a record of all them breaks, rest periods and driving times. By manipulating the TACRAF, they're disguising all of that, you know? 
Officer Lynch begins his investigation by printing out the distance traveled data from the tachograph, as well as the recorded engine speed. But the data doesn't add up. Now, when I look at, at the vehicle speed here, right, it's telling me that the vehicle never moved. That's fine. The guy could have been at rest that day. However, the engine speed between 600 and 800 revs, there's a 36 minute period there. From 800 to 1000 revs, we've got 53 minutes. So if I add all these up, compare these two printouts, the vehicle speed zero for 24 hours. But this is telling me that the truck was actually moving for seven hours and 23 minutes. You know, there's no doubt there's a device here somewhere. Officer Lynch, suspecting the vehicle's tachograph has been illegally tampered with, decides to take the truck back on the road to test it. Our tachograph is recording the fact that we're actually driving. That's what it's supposed to do. The speedometer is working, and it's based on the information we've got from the calibrated speed gun used by the sergeant here. It's, it's working correctly. The, the, the two speeds are matching, and the odometer is recording the actual distance travelled. So I'm happy that there's no device being used at the moment as we're driving this vehicle. Everything may have worked correctly in the test, but Officer Lynch suspects there is an illegal and highly dangerous device fitted to the vehicle. Now he needs to find the device to prove it. Attention. The Garda Traffic Corps have pulled over a car. It's suspected of being involved in a recent shoplifting incident. With her child in the back seat, the driver has been in no hurry to tell the officers the truth. And they're still trying to find out her identity. Have you any ID with your daughter? No, no, I don't think so. Maybe a bank card or... No? Is that medication you have in your bag there? She finally provides a social security card. That's the real dream now, is it? Yeah. OK, so in third go, yeah, been given a social services card now, control, and if you wouldn't mind trying that for me, please. And there's more to this woman's story. She's got previous. You just released out of prison back in November. What was that for? What was that for? Shoplifting. And nine o'clock last night, the car was up in Navin, shoplifting, wine and, and pardon? Not only has she been inside, but she shouldn't be driving the car at all. She's no license. She was disqualified for 10 years back in 2003 and didn't get a license since. You're going to have to get someone to come down. The car's going to be seized under Section 41, OK? You have no license and no insurance. You can't have insurance with no license. The woman's desperate. She tries to bargain with the Garda, tipping them off about a drug shipment heading for Dublin. When I say a deal, I mean a deal, and you get what the best lot of heroin that ever came into Dublin. It's not who you know, it's what you know. You don't want a load of imaginary heroin, do you? Are you sure? But they're not biting. The car is being seized. The woman retrieves her child and belongings from the vehicle and leaves on foot. The car's on its way to the pound. Another illegal driver is off the roads, and the officers can move on to the next call. Dublin Port is a key entry point on Ireland's border, handling almost 50% of all trade. But as well as cargo and ferries, it's also popular with cruise liners. A record 151 cruises were confirmed for the 2018 season, bringing just over 270,000 visitors to Dublin and contributing 50 million euros to the local economy. Today, the port is welcoming the 300-metre-long Disney Magic, with its 2,700 passengers for the first time. With the huge ship comes a massive security operation. Head of Port Security, Tom Kavanagh, is overseeing proceedings. So we do an interior suite and uh, just mirror underneath the ship once they check again when you come back in the afternoon. 
Man, yeah, yeah. This cruise ship is the Disney Magic, and it's the first time she's been here, and it's a real, real good thing for us um, and for the passengers to come to Warren for the first time. Disney is a global brand, and we're really enjoying having them here. There's a great atmosphere. There's an entertainment package put on here by Dublin Park. There's always a high level of security in the mall, but this particular one has come straight from the US. So the level of security afforded to this one is incredible. We're really on our top of our game for this particular one. At the entrance to the port, security officer Dermot Weldon is overseeing checkpoint security. Every single vehicle coming in and out of this part of the port has to be authorised, either because they work there or because of the cruise ship's arrival. I have the manifest here for visitors list. So everybody who's gone visiting that ship or going onto that ship has to be checked with ID and their name on this list. If it's not on it, they don't get in. Simple as that. No excuses, no exceptions. For the buses and coaches which have arrived to pick up disembarking passengers, there's extra security checks. As Dublin Port is a potential high-profile target for a terrorist attack, the security team have to be vigilant, looking out for anything that might raise suspicion. Security, whether you like it or not, the main aspect in everybody's life. Even if you have an alarm in your house, you have to make sure no one robs your house. It's the same with the crew liner. You have to make sure no one robs the crew liner, no one blows up the crew liner, no one's trying to blow up the crew liner. It's all about security. All the vehicles pass their security checks, and on the dockside, the cruise passengers can board their buses to go on excursions around Dublin. The passengers may have left, but with the cruise ship still in port, security remains at the highest level. Disney could be considered a target for terrorists or subversives. We will not allow anybody to cause a problem here in Dublin. That's what they want and that's what they get. So far, everything has gone to plan. But until the ship leaves, the security team must remain on high alert. Once the passengers return from their excursions, the ship sets sail for the next leg of its journey. Finally, the security team can relax until the next cruise liner of the season arrives. A speeding truck has been seized by the Garda and its driver arrested for dangerous driving. But there's also a suspicion that the truck has been tampered with to avoid safety regulations. Road Safety Authority Officer Seamus Lynch has checked the truck's data and is certain it's fitted with an illegal device that stops the tachograph working correctly. When I compare these two printouts, the vehicle speed, zero, but this is telling me that the truck was actually moving for seven hours and 23 minutes. Now he needs to prove it. What's probably fitted to this particular vehicle is um, a canvas manipulation device. Having come across these devices before, Officer Lynch has an idea of how it works. To trigger the device, we've got to turn the ignition on without actually engaging the engine. Now, Darren, if you want to put your foot on the accelerator, count to six, one, two, three, four, five, six, starter. The device will be activated and we will then proceed to drive and we'll actually see what effect does this device have on the truck. Pulling out there now. You can clearly see the tachograph is not recording driving. We're actually not travelling at all according to the speedometer. It's at zero. Using a quiet stretch of road, the officer driving puts his foot down. We've upped the speed, so let's see what the calibrated gun tells us. We're now down 122. The speed limit is 90. The driver has no idea what speed he's driving at. Speedometer's not working, so he hasn't a clue. You've got to bear in mind this is a truck. A truck like this can't stop in a hurry. And usually the people who use these devices, they're used for the purpose of disguising the fact that they're driven longer hours than they're supposed to, they haven't got the required brakes or rest periods, so they're more than likely fatigued drivers. And the statistics show that one in five accidents are caused by fatigue. It's extremely dangerous, and uh, you know I would imagine that the people who fit these devices give absolutely no consideration whatsoever to road safety. Armed with the evidence that the tachograph has been tampered with, Officer Lynch now needs to find the device. 
his team starts looking for anything unusual. And it's not long before they find what they're looking for. Is there a black box I see here? We've seen these before. Auto CAN bus data log. Going to have a look inside, OK? Right, there we have a printed circuit board. So what I'm going to, I'm just going to try and do a little bit of a test to turn the engine on now, OK? Now, if my suspicions are correct, I would expect to see a green light or something else. Four, five, six. There's your green light. She's now activated. With the suspicions confirmed, the evidence Officer Lynch has uncovered will be used to prosecute the truck's operator and driver. The haulage industry is highly competitive, leading to companies taking risks to complete the work on time. But on this occasion, they haven't got away with it. They now face a fine of up to 5,000 euros and even six months in jail. It's all down to being motivated by money at the end of the day. I think the more work they carry out, the more they get paid. So, you know, I presume they look at the tachograph and driver's orders regulations as being too restrictive. But the problem with that is, obviously, you're compromising road safety and the conditions for drivers. These drivers are often, you know, made to use these devices and they're ending up driving 16, 17, 18 hours a day and not getting um, adequate rest periods. Quite a small looking device, isn't it? But what it can do with kind of pretty serious consequences. If one was to consciously think of road safety, you wouldn't put in one of these. 